take the setting stack. Let's add that navigation. Let's go back to app. Need the first part here. Paste. We can steal from home stack. Okay, so we got button, we got create navigator, and what else do we need? We need setting screen. So we actually need setting screen. Okay, so settings. Our stack, our screen, passing our navigation. Looks good, reloaded. So now if I come back over here, we can now delete our stack because we don't need it anymore. So if we import settings, did I name that wrong? Nope, settings stack. There it is. Wrong. setting stack all right so now we don't need our button we don't need the create or the setting stack all that looks good settings sometimes when you're making changes like this you'll have to actually flush the application to get a better idea of what the problem is invalid component property for screen settings so go to screen Settings, navigation, navigate to home, home stack, home, setting stack, setting screen. Oh, I forgot to convert it. Constant, equal. So we convert it to a constant from a function. Need to export it. All right. Now we've got the settings. Home. Setting stack. Screen. Let's go back to app and let me reload it. So as you make changes like this, sometimes when you get the error over here, you have to actually go back to the console and hit the R button, which reloads the application. So when you're messing around with the navigator or the drawers or the stacks, you will have to reload from time to time. All right, and lastly, we have this navigation container. So we could actually create this one as another navigator. And this could be not navigation container, but this could actually be our main stack. And we go back to app. So we copy this section right here. We go back to main stack. We need to make it a constant. Equals, there's no parameters for this one. And we need to return code, save, there we go, then export, default, and stack. Right, it's not going to work because we need our imports. So we can come up here, copy all of our imports, back to main stack. Okay, we don't need create drawer navigator. We have navigation, we have home stack, we have settings stack. Okay, we saved that. We don't need status bar. Right now, if we go to app, we can actually now get rid of all of that. So let me leave the last one so I can quickly reference it. So we have settings stack. We'll change this to main stack. Main stack. And now, 
all I have to do is return and stack. And I have to fix one thing in the stack. So because we moved our navigator down, we need to fix our imports. Okay, imports are fixed. And we now have our working application. And it's now organized. So when we look at app, it says, oh, okay, our code is not here. So we move it out of here. We can actually drop the React. Oh, forgot to move him over. Now that should work. Reload. Oh, import. Forgot to import the drawer which we needed. So now everything works again. Our app is clean. And now all of our individual components for navigation and screens are now separated. Now, if we wanted to go even further, we could go further. We could create like a component. So if you wanted to, you could create this screen component. So you could do like a stack screen and pass in some values. You could also do a button. So like if we go to the screen here, we could pull out button and create button to be a different component. We could actually export a custom button. We could do custom text. We could also create styles. So I could take this style right here and we can create a special style for views. So we could do new file, view, style. JS, our view, let's copy the style, and do import, let me just copy this, it'll be quicker. All right, so we need to import style sheet from React Native, create a constant for our screen style, or in this case, view style, and we export the constant. And we're gonna set the margins, top margin menu item, justify content. So we have view style. So now if I go back to the home screen, I can now import my style. From styles.viewstyle. And then to use it, you get rid of all this garbage in here. And we can now do view style dot view and our text moved up to the top because I changed the layout. But yet our other notifications are not impacted. But what's nice about this is, oh, I now have a common view style. So I can now apply this style throughout my other screens. I copy and the notifications and do the same thing here. Now, if I go to notifications, it's at the top. But because I haven't applied to settings yet, settings is still here. So if we do it again, settings. And there we go. So now if we want to change the look and feel for any of our screens, we just change the view style here. We could change view. I will bring up our other example, which is going to pretty much pull it all together. I've already pre-coded this. So we'll go through all the different changes I made to the application. So let me stop the current application and start this one so as you can see here in this project i've already broken things out for the screens i've added some additional styles 
I uh, have our navigation, we have our assets. So now I'm gonna load it and you'll see a splash screen with the Belpreneur. And then we go to our home, which has an image. So in order to get that splash screen to show up, we make a small change to the app.json file. And all I had to do was find the splash tag or the splash property and change the image location to our assets. So I've also added a image to home. Uh, I did not have time to find our other developer icon, but uh, I'll replace that here. But all I had to do there was again, find my icon. And then on my home screen, I just needed to import the image tag. Need those, there we go. So we imported the image tag. I imported the image style and I told it where to find the image. So we do source. And since it's not a web image, I pointed it directly to the image location. And the image style just has some style sheets for the specific image. So if we go to image, we're setting it for 66 and 58. I have small image, large image, stretchy image. So if we wanted to change the image size, all we have to do is go change the style and it shrunk a little bit. <clears throat> this code picks up all your different styles. So again, it's selectable. So I can do stretchy image. And it doesn't look good. So we'll go back to the original image we had. I also added some additional styles for the screens. So if we go look at our screens, I set it at the top, map margin to 10, uh, line item center. I also added some text styling. So this is a uh, title text. So it's font 20 and it's bold. So if we go back to home and look at text, text is using title text. And then we have our on button. Still click. So now if we go to notifications, I made some changes here. So notifications reused our image background tag that we talked about, I think in class two or three about fundamentals. So the image background allows us to put an image behind our view. And then all you have to do is stack elements on top of the background image so you can layer them over the image. So we have our developer as the background. We also have a scrollable text here for first part and last uh, second part. I have my notifications and my notifications button here. And one thing I wanted to show you here is, yes, I am importing styles, but you can also still use internal customized styles. So we can actually define additional styles for this page here. Don't really recommend it. Really, once you start breaking components out, you really want to make sure you reuse the particular style sheets you want. Because if you hard code a style this way, if you need to change a theme or overall look and feel of your application, you'll have to track down where this code is within a given component and change it there. Whereas if you did everything under styles or you had a themes folder, if you changed it there, it would apply to everything. Also, this particular screen is starting to get a little big. So one of the things we could have done was we could have pulled out this safe area view here and pulled out this scroll view here in two separate components. And then we could have imported those components directly, keeping this guy nice and small and pulling the individual components into their own separate files. So for instance, we could do, I don't think I have a components folder. I do not. So if we do components, you know, let's just do a new file. And this is just sample scroll view, JavaScript, paste. So we need a constant. We need to give it a name. So we'll call it what we call it the files, the sample scroll view. We don't need to pass in any values. So it can be an empty parameters. Then we start our function. And then we need to return our element, return our view, so return. 
then we need to export our sample. And then lastly, we need to import our components. So let's just make life easy. We'll go up here and copy the top section, paste. So it's telling us what we don't need. So we don't need image background. We don't need style sheet or view. We just need scroll view and text. 